you're actually consuming a credit card's worth of plastic every single week without even knowing it. Except you're probably not. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Marie and in today's video we're going to be debunking one of those things that's been cited over and over again. It's been cited to death when it comes to plastic pollution, microplastics and plastic pollution advocacy. If you follow climate news and have for a while, you might have heard this as well. The claim is that you are eating a credit card's worth of plastic every single week, roughly five grams of plastic. This claim comes from a 2019 study that's backed by the WWF. This powerful comparison was picked up by so many news platforms. It was all over social media, it's from 2019, but I think I'm still hearing it recited over and over again. I also cannot say with absolute certainty that I haven't said this at some point, so I'm here to set the record straight because we might not actually be consuming five grams of microplastic a week. So today's video is actually a little bit on a positive note. Yay, that never happens. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what this study specifically found and then I'm going to share with you some of the methodology, how this study was conducted, and then I'm going to share some criticisms. Let's get started. The study backed by the WWF pulled data from 50 different studies on microplastics. And when they put the findings and the data from these different studies together, they came up with a rough estimate stating that then we probably, as average consumers, eat about five grams of plastic a week, which is the equivalent weight of a credit card hence the comparison. And if you've been on this channel for a hot second, you know that microplastic contamination and pollution is basically everywhere. But there are some hot spots. There are certain food types that contain more microplastics than others. Not everything contains the same amount of microplastic. So what this study specifically found was that microplastic contamination in humans could be traced to salt, could be traced to water, yikes, both tap water as well as bottled water, although bottled water tends to have more microplastic. And this is not specifically a part of this study, but I think another study was recently published this month or last month stating that water that was bottled in glass also had a really high percentage of microplastic, but that was not because of the glass, it was because of the paint inside the bottle cap, which also release microplastic. Anyway, bottled water tends to have a higher concentration of microplastic than tap water, usually. Fish and seafood was also one of the sources of microplastic that is the most glaring, especially so seafood that you eat whole. If you eat crabs, shrimp, etc., where you eat the whole body and the digestive system, you eat all the microplastic that's been absorbed and and accumulated in that system, you eat that as well, which is just another reason to choose plant-based, but don't see me count the reasons. And beer. And that's a little bit of a blow. I gotta be honest. What this study was successful in confirming was that microplastic, which is plastic particles that are smaller than five millimeters in diameter. I have a whole video about microplastic where we go into this a lot further, where we talk about what it is and like where it is, where it's at. If you want more, I have it. Okay, but this study was successful in confirming that microplastic contamination is quite prevalent throughout our environment and throughout the human body. One of the problems with microplastic research is that we are still not quite sure what the long-term exposure is going to mean for humans, for the environment, etc. We still don't have a lot of data available to say specifically this is what happens because microplastic contamination is still a relatively new field, which makes it really difficult to say something, you know, really concrete and direct about what it does. What we can see is that we do know that it's there and there has been many, many, many studies conducted that show that humans all across the globe, we have found microplastics in our brains, in our blood, in breast milk, in sperm, in, in motherfucking placentas, which mean, okay, which means that humans are now in contact with plastic even before we're born. And so far, all the research I've seen on this says it can't be good. We don't know how bad, but we, it's not, it's not great. This study was more than anything a call to action, urging governments to take decisive international action to regulate and reduce plastic use and pollution, urging industries to innovate in packaging and waste management, and urging consumers to reduce plastic consumption and demand systemic change. But are you really eating a credit card's worth of plastic every single week? Let's break it down. So to get to this five grams a week estimate, the study backed by WWF pulled data from 50 different studies. There's just 
tiny issue here. They used different methods of measuring plastic and had different scopes for what they wanted to find out. Some looked at the sizes of plastic particles, while other studies focused on different types of plastic. Some of the researchers had access to really specific and sensitive detection tools, while others didn't. And because of the vastly different ways these studies were carried out, it makes it really difficult to pair them equally. And to make this even trickier, the 2019 study had to convert number of plastic particles to grams. And there's also issues there. In order to do that, you have to make a lot of assumptions about the material you're converting, like the average size, shape and density of the material. And that is not necessarily as easy as it sounds because different types of plastic have different properties, qualities. For instance, the mass of PET plastic is vastly different from the mass of polypropylene. The mass, the density of these different types of plastics is not one-to-one -one comparable and that variable isn't mentioned in the study really. So where did this five grams a week scenario come from? Well, it's a scenario generated based on worst case outcomes, which means that in certain extreme cases for some consumers in specific scenarios, they could be eating five grams of plastic a week. But that's not really the same as saying that people eat five grams a week. I don't want to be pedantic or anything, but it's just not the same. So actually, yeah, I do want to be pedantic. <laughs> this estimate of five grams of plastic a week is based on a worst case scenario focusing on foods with a high concentration of plastic. This estimate doesn't really take different diets, lifestyles and locations into account. And all these things matter quite a lot. In reality, the amount of plastic you're exposed to depends on where you live and what you eat and even whether or not you drink bottled or tap water. Someone drinking only bottled water in a polluted region may be taking in more microplastics than someone who sticks to clean tap water. Plus, and uh, this is important, the estimate talks about how much plastic we ingest, but ingesting something doesn't mean that it accumulates in your body and stays there. Actually, the vast majority of microplastics that go into our body comes out again especially so the bigger particles. Now, when it comes to absorption of microplastic, we can see that there is contamination because it is in blood and brains and placentas, etc. What we really should be focused on in that kind of scenario is nanoplastics and the chemical binders that hold the plastic together because those components can actually be absorbed in your body. But when we're talking about microplastics, it is much more likely that you will um, pass it which also isn't great, by the way, because that means that the plastic will go into our sewage system, where it will get back into our water systems and back into aquatic environments and continue to pollute. It is still not great. It just means that it doesn't stain your body. You don't have 43 credit cards worth of plastic in your body. And when we're not looking at the nuances and just reading the headline, it can kind of read like that. However, that's not the case either. It doesn't mean that the problem is gone, it just means that the problem is different than what we might expect. Once again, so boring, but the science is still developing and we still don't have enough credible, reliable data to say something specific about what actually happens. We just know it's not great. The we eat a credit card's worth of plastic every week is a really powerful image. It has done wonders in terms of grabbing people's attention, both on social media as well as on media outlets. It's something that you see and you understand. It's very visual. It's a very visual representation of the problem and it generates some feelings in people, grabs their attention, perhaps makes us scared or furious in any way feelings that typically tend to invoke a type of action or demand for someone to do better, which is what the WWF wanted with this study. However, it oversimplifies the science. And here, I'm sort of at a crossroad because I don't necessarily think that this is beneficial to plastic pollution advocacy. Sure, you can invoke a lot of feelings in people when they first hear you consume a credit card's worth of plastic every week, but when they later find out that not to be true, I think it has the complete opposite effect then. And you know, if we're talking worst case scenarios, we're also just making people panic or feel numb from all the shitty information that they're getting that they end up not acting at all. And we don't want that because we want to see legislation, we want to see plastic reduction and we want to see less waste mismanaged and in order to get these things we as consumers need to demand it and to push which is unfortunate and actually in august this year we might be getting it which i think is exciting because the plastic treaty negotiations they've been going on for a while i think they started back in 2022 and they're finally coming to a conclusion this year in august of 2025 is the very first legally binding 
plastic treaty, which means that the producers and manufacturers of plastic will have to change the way that they're producing this material and how we manage it. And hopefully this treaty is going to be ambitious. I will get back to you as soon as it's finalized and we can talk about what it actually means. The plastic lobby is there, so I wouldn't pop the champagne just yet, but I'm excited to see where this ends up. That was a little bit of a topic switch, but what I just wanted to say is that I think it makes sense to communicate the problems with plastic pollution in a way where people that are not involved with climate science, climate news or advocacy understand it. Eating a credit card's worth of plastic every week is a really powerful visual. But if it's not true and we're misleading and misrepresenting the science, I think we're doing a massive disservice to the message. Causing panic very rarely changes something for the better. So there is that. And I don't know if this caused panic. I think, honestly, this has just been used as an attention grab, which, you know, I can respect. It's just, if you're actually interested in what happens, it can be a really good idea to know what actually happens. So that was what this video was for. So if you ever hear it, you kind of know to take it with a grain of salt. And then I can promise you that you won't hear oversimplifications like this on my channel. But I try to represent these topics with the nuance that it deserves. And when something is really bad, I want to say that it's really bad, but I don't want to make it seem more bad than it is because that really never did anyone any good. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And if you want more climate deep dives like this, this is the channel for you. Check out my impact series where we go over the different kinds of impacts of materials and phenomena and brands and products. It's a good load of fun if you're just a little bit nerdy with climate science. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye.